After almost two decades of nearly yearly exposure to large megafires, it's hard to argue that people in the Southwest are not fire adapted. It's just that we've adapted to the wrong kind of fire. As a consequence of climate change and past forest management decisions, we've adapted to fire that's outside of normal historical patterns for most southwestern dry conifer forests. Our current fires are hotter, more severe, and less healthy than during any era over the past thousand years. One of the important features of the southwestern landscape is that historically, much of it was dominated by fire regimes of high frequency and low severity. Fires would recur pretty often and leave behind the tall trees, but thin out the understory. A hundred years of fire exclusion has changed that picture and led to forests that are quite dense with young trees as the result of things that people did on purpose. They wanted to keep fire out. They wanted fast growing young trees in the national forests. But we have come to realize that that presents a lot of problems in terms of creating dense forests that have connected canopies that can easily carry severe fires. Fire is just such a natural element here in these forests with there's so much lightning here and fuels that basically these forests burn anytime, anytime they can burn. Anytime there's enough fuel and it's dry enough, it's going to burn. Forests have evolved with that for millions of years. So these pine trees here have thick bark. Um, they have an ecology that's built around frequent, generally low severity fires. And, and you can see what happens when you remove that element, this evolutionary natural element from the system. The system gets thrown out of whack. Even with the lessons learned over the past few decades, we still put out the healthy fires to which the forests are adapted. By continually putting out these small healthy fires, we've prevented fire from fulfilling its natural role of reducing fuels. Combine overgrown forests with the drier, hotter conditions created by climate change, and the result is landscapes that are primed to explode. In reality, a fire put out is a fire put off. And the hard truth is that all of us depend on the resources forests provide, and we all will need to learn to live with fire and smoke, especially those that live in the forest, because the question isn't if a fire will happen, it's when. So there's good documentation that climate has already warmed, beginning really in the, in the late 1980s up until the present across the western United States. And that warming has been associated with a much larger area burned across the whole western United States, including the southwest. When you look at future projections for climate change, we see higher temperatures, the likelihood of drier conditions, longer fire seasons, that is to say fires could begin earlier in the springtime and continue until later in the fall. And these trends suggest that fire is going to play an increasingly important role in southwestern forests. Firefighters across the southwest are already adapting to this new normal. The bottom line is that we're going to see bigger and more intense fire because of climate change and that inevitably has an impact on what we do. You know, it's necessary that we adapt to the circumstances that we're being handed. Adaptation will require new choices in how we live with wildfire. For nearly a century, we've operated under the delusion we actually have the ability to create and live in fire-free forests. Our current response to fire includes massive emergency actions to put out or suppress wildfires. Suppression efforts are then followed by post-fire disaster response to severe floods, loss of resources, and poor water quality, all of which can cost millions of dollars, often exceeding the cost of the fire suppression efforts. Communities are now recognizing these costs and taking steps to adapt. The city of Santa Fe has 40% of its drinking water coming from a surface water supply coming from the Pecos Wilderness and the Santa Fe National Forest. So for the last 15 years, in recognition of the wildfire risk posed to their municipal water supply, the city has developed agreements and is working with the Santa Fe National Forest and others, including the Nature Conservancy, on reducing risks to the water supply that you know, are really important to um, the drinking water for the city. 
Santa Fe is not alone. Fire adaptation is taking hold in both large and small communities across the Southwest as people grasp the urgency of facing the new challenges of wildfire. A fire adapted community is a concept, it's an idea. It is a community that recognizes the wildfire risk around it and takes actions to proactively mitigate that risk. There's a long way to go. We need to strengthen our community wildfire protection plans to include uh, resilience and post-fire planning. Uh, we need to do more management on all sides of the fence. The private landowners have a lot of work to do. The homeowners associations that uh, may have restrictive covenants uh, need to change them. I'd love to see municipalities, villages, towns, and rural areas really supporting their, their managers on the adjacent public lands. Love to see community members connecting with their local volunteer fire departments on how they can help. And I'd love to see a lot of prescribed fire in New Mexico at a scale that's not currently happening. Building off the work from the Fire Adapted Community Networks, we know that we can create a society that is capable of living with fire one that sees fire as a necessary part of a whole and healthy landscape. Reporters, scientists, and artists can all help to create a society that understands that fire can be used as a tool for climate change adaptation. Uh, areas that are moving along the path towards becoming fire adapted uh, are thinking about resilience of where they are in their landscape and are also concerned about climate change and they see this dry future and they recognize that the drought that we're still in is, is not as bad as it's going to get and they, they want to take actions. Basically we've, we've lived now in these landscapes for 100, 150 years, that is Euro-Americans, mostly putting fires out and doing things to inhibit fires. And, and we've been taught from you know, day one that, that fire is not good for us and by implication not good for the forest. So, you know, there's this cultural bias that we've built that, that fire is always evil. Mm -hmm. And we know now from our science work that this is not the truth. Um, I mean, fire obviously can be bad to pee for people when their ho homes burn up and lives are lost. And there is great risk now. But fire itself is not a bad thing. It just is. And it, these, these forests have evolved with fire and need fire. So we've been trying to keep fire away but it keeps coming back, and it keeps coming back more ferociously every time it does. Mm -hmm.